Longsword is somewhat of a middle ground between Sword and Shield's speed and Greatsword's power. If Greatsword feels too slow to you but Sword and Shield feels too weak, Longsword is the weapon for you. Third generation's Longsword introduces a leveling system, so your Longsword will not be at peak performance the entire hunt. You will need to attack to build up a gauge, and use that gauge to pull off a complete combo in order to temporarily level up your weapon, increasing the damage it does. Only the last hit of the combo needs to hit for this level up to occur, and there are three levels. White, Yellow, and Red. This makes it somewhat of a technical weapon, as well as one that insists you play a little aggressively. It takes some getting used to, but is a lot of fun and very effective once mastered. Like Sword and Shield, and unlike Greatsword, you can run with your weapon out. You have three variations of what is called a Fade Slash, which is an attack which will let you reposition at the same time. They're all extremely helpful and a staple of good longsword play. There are longswords with all elements and status ailments except for sleep. You also cannot inflict KO or exhaust, and there are no attacks that will do impact damage with longsword. I've put together a spreadsheet for all of the longswords in Portable 3rd. Check the description for a link. The Longsword's main attacks have a pretty good vertical reach, meaning you will be able to hit parts of monsters that shorter weapons such as Sword and Shield may have trouble with. While this is all well and good, your attacks are often wide and sweeping, and if you're not careful, you can trip your teammates in multiplayer. Focus on using the vertical slash and thrust attacks to avoid knocking them down. While this is a common complaint levied towards Longsword users, it is by no means the only weapon that can or will trip or launch teammates. All you can do is your own part to ensure the team succeeds. Longsword's a great weapon to start with, if you want decent mobility with attacks that still feel like they're powerful. That being said, I encourage you to experiment. If Longsword isn't working for you, try a different weapon. There are 12 weapon classes to choose from, 9 melee, and 3 ranged. Try them all. I won't be going into many advanced mechanics or calculations in this video. This will be more for beginner and maybe some intermediate knowledge. The weapon and armor I'll be using can all be bought from the equipment shop next to the smithy or across from the item shop. Let's go over the attacks first, and I'll talk more about them afterwards during a hunt with Great Jaggy. Motion values, or MV, will be displayed up here and are the damage of that attack. Higher MVs mean a harder hitting attack. All attacks with a longsword do cutting damage. Once the spirit gauge is filled, there is a temporary buff of 1.13 times until it stops glowing. Your damage increases for each gauge color. For white, it's 1.05 times. For yellow, it's 1.1 times. And for red, it's 1.2 times. That's 20%, which is a pretty big buff. The motion values displayed here are the default values. The ones in parentheses are considering the damage increases from having a full red gauge, which is around 33%, except for the empty spirit slash, as that one is just considering the 20% red gauge buff, no 13% extra from having a full gauge.
en a... Non, on a rien, non Grab helpful supplies from a blue box. Great Jaggy should start in Area 5. We can get there through the shortcut to Area 7. Remember to paintball the Great Jaggy so you can find it if it runs away. Remember that playing solo and playing with others is different. When you're alone or not around teammates, focus on positioning and dealing damage. When you're in multiplayer and or around others, make sure to avoid hitting them, even if that means you have to be a little passive. That being said, leveling up your gauge can be very difficult, and at a certain point, if you hit teammates, it could be their bad positioning. Just do your best, and if you have to greet a spirit gauge level up and you hit a teammate, don't worry about it. They should understand if they've tried to play longsword in multiplayer for any amount of time. Remember that you can get a level up off of any monster, and since Great Jaggy summons help often, consider getting it off of them. If you need to, consider even getting level ups before engaging with the large monster in an adjacent area. Remember that you can time out your attacks. Do so if it means you get to hit something with your spirit round slash or to prevent yourself from being hit. And sometimes you just have to go wild and swinging and hope for the best. Try and strike a balance. Also, while not insanely relevant, your spirit blade attacks will never be deflected. It's good to know, but you don't want to hit hard parts anyway. Having a flashing gauge should make your weapon bounce less as well. Remember to stay healed up. Use the flash bomb to make some space if you need it. Once you're in red gauge, you'll be doing more damage. It'll make it easier or more likely to stagger or topple the monster. Try and maintain it as much as you can. There's the Spirit Blade Fade Slash I was talking about. And there we go. With Longsword, you need to strike a balance between offense and defense. It'll make more sense the more you use it. I recommend you hunt Great Jaggy a few times and make his full armor set and do some mining to upgrade an Iron Katana into the Iron Katana Grace. That will be arguably the best weapon and armor at this point in the game and will set you up for success. Take your time, be patient with yourself. If you like how Longsword plays or looks but you lack the grace that you're looking for, just stick with it. You'll get the hang of it eventually. Until next time.